All right, so uh, welcome to Ignite Karaoke. Uh, I'm your uh, presenter for this evening, Michael Ducey, uh, and this should uh, advance here in a moment. Awkward silence. 15. Oh, okay. So communication is very important in DevOps, and sometimes it just feels like we're just barking at each other a lot, right? And we don't necessarily take time to understand what the other person's saying. And so it just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But what's also very important is opacity. So being able to, uh, uh, you know, not see through things. Uh, but so opacity is the problem is when you don't give the developers the information that they need. So you're having that communication and going back and forth. But it's like, kind of like when you log onto a Unix system for the first time. You're like, ah, oh, this is Unix. I know this, right? Uh, and then you get the graphical display of the file system turning around, and you dive into it. What's really important, though, is when we start to think about 3D printing and how, do, how we can enable our developers and how can we communicate with them better so that they can 3D print the designs that they need and build those designs. Hello, venture capitalists. I am here to pitch my great app idea. I call it Friday because everyone's excited about it. And it was really the only thing that really meant uh, that my app, which <laughs> I need money so that I can reach uh, more audiences because this is a very valuable product. What it does is it actually makes it so that whenever you call IT and they say, did you turn it off and on again? It's already been turned off and on again. So you like, you pick up your phone and it'll just turn off and on again if you have my app installed and you won't even know why, but something's not broken now. Uh, the other thing that's great is uh, it joins all of your tools, so like your Facebook account, we'll just flash off and on again for all the people you know, and this is going to make the world such a better place. Look at how much joy <laughs> Friday brings into the world. Thank you, give me money. Ignite Karaoke is one of the best things ever. That Tiffany was so fantastic to introduce to us last year. Many of you in the audience might be lazy or perhaps intimidated about speaking, but you too can come on stage and do some crazy stuff and become more comfortable speaking, maybe do a little dance, sing, share cat photos, because that's really all speakers do is share cat photos and make things up about the internet and working together. So you too can practice speaking and then rewrite your presentation to give at a future DevOps Days, hopefully DevOps Days Columbus next year. So please get in line. There's still room behind Ducey. And if you don't, you might blue screen and you wouldn't want a blue screen, because who runs Windows 95 anymore anyway? So come tell us about your upgrade path. Thank you. So as Kyle said, I started my career in 93 at CompuServe, but before that I taught myself basic on a TRS-80 color computer, and this is all about the things that I've seen changes in my career, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna talk about that today, and, and back then there was a lot of things that aren't, all you millennials out there, you have no idea how tough we had it. Um, like, this, this is like modern day code. Back then, we had basic. It was a bunch of, each line of code had a number on it. You could go to, go to was like a major thing back then in coding. And this is how most people see it now. They're like, you used go to statements? <laughs> yeah. Really? That's how we coded. Yeah, we did bang on the keyboard. It was not pretty, but it worked. No matter what, it worked. And for instance, there was no cookbook to tell us how to do this stuff. Star Wars, the real original Star Wars, what is, what is it now? Number three, it was number one, okay? And there was nothing to tell us how to code. I was learning on my own. There was no kind of recipe and, and, and when you, <laughs> and boy, let me tell you, when it didn't work, 
it went south in a hurry. Those systems did not fail gracefully. It was pretty bad. And I worked in the military and it was bad. And what is a shell script? Back then, it was being on a, on a beach and writing a play. That's what a shell script was, none of this newfangled stuff. All right, so there's been a lot of changes, and you should appreciate what you have today. Thank you. We've all seen the fires with our computers and the traditional data centers. Now, we have DevOps, and at some point, that's going to change. There we go. So obviously, we have really bad things and really good things. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> This is what uh, my team thinks of me when I uh, am not doing the right thing. I'm uh, constantly reviewing their PRs and jumping off the top of this, uh, this TV here. Um, <laughs> they hope that I would go and, and commit suicide. But optimization, that is why we do code reviews. Code reviews are super important to give feedback and optimize our team's efficiency uh, within our organization. Um, we constantly are, are reviewing and, and providing feedback so that we can continue to be better. And here is Brad, Brad's up there, <laughs> smashing his keyboard as uh, reading my code review, because uh, I am way too harsh, and I am not empathetic, and I need to iterate on that, as we all do, right? API security, we uh, all struggle with security. Security is one of those things that uh, just is quite hard to do, and we need to, um, to focus some of our, uh, our cycles on security and, and making it suck less, as I like to say in uh, the 2018 motto. Here I am, cuddly, like myself, my nice cuddly <laughs> shape. <laughs> uh, just like this poor kitten up here. We cuddle together. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, Tiffany and I are gonna talk about the pitfalls of uh, thematic vagabonding, or pair programming, as it's called. Yes, we've learned some very important lessons, and we're going to share the most important lessons that we've learned, including, uh, Going places together, uh, it's kind of like coming in out Fear of the cold. Fear programming is a journey. Yeah. That's right. We're with the journey that we take together, and sometimes it is cold. You might think that you're on a frozen tundra, but really, uh, you're on a tightrope. <laughs> and you're always afraid to say the wrong thing in the code review, like uh, he just mentioned. Yeah, because, I mean, someone's on the rope, and someone else is on the other end of the cliff, and they may or may not have a knife, and so you have to learn how each other deals with really terrible problems. Right, and sometimes you might be scared of things, like small children. <laughs> and as you kind of go through this idea of pair programming, you have to really understand, <laughs> like small children. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as long as you have a good attitude and whistle while you work, uh, you'll end up getting along. And like, I've learned so much from you. I learned how to play the harmonica. I learned how to uh, sing the blues. What have you learned from me? Well, uh, I like your tattoos on your hands, right? That says puppet life. I have some stickers, by the way, if anyone wants some stickers. <laughs> uh, but to wrap it up, I think like, the single most important thing that I have learned to you uh, is to always give 10%. Yeah, well, my aspect of it is, is you always have to make sure that who you're pair programming with, if they're busy, if they have time to do it, whether if they even understand the problem to begin with. And the thing is, is like, this would be pair programming with your manager in between. Mm. <laughs> and with that, thank you very much. <laughs>